him that I I was going to serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Can y'all just give God a little bit of praise in the house? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God is now the preaching hour. And God, I pray now that I will decrease in God, that you would increase. Yes. God, that you would have your way in this, your Please. servant on today. Please, God, that you would have your way in this worship experience. Right. God, it's all about the choices that we make right. that bring us to the place where we are right now. Amen. God, I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart Oh, God, that they will be ever so pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, if I have committed any sin, God, that will keep me from preaching your word on today. Oh, God, I pray now that you would forgive me. Oh, God, that you might be able to use this vessel. Oh, God, that somebody's heart might catch on fire and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, I wish somebody's heart would 
Catch on fire. I wish somebody's heart would feel with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I wish somebody's heart would catch on fire. This morning we'll be coming from the Old Testament, the second book of Kings, chapter 20. I'll begin reading at verse 1 and we'll commence reading at verse 11. Second Kings 20, beginning at verse 1. It says, In those days Hezekiah became ill, and he was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you are going to die, and you will not recover. Amen. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully. And with wholehearted devotion, and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. He cried some awful before the Lord. Before Isaiah had left the middle court, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to him. He said, go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father, David, said. I have heard your prayer, and I have seen your tears. I will heal you. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. 15 years to your life. And I will deliver you in this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. 
I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Amen. Then Isaiah, Isaiah said to Hezekiah, prepare a poultice of figs. They did so and applied it to the boil and he recovered. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll stop reading there, but we will reference the rest of those verses up to 11. Amen. The choices we make, we will either live or we will die. Amen. Our text today says that Hezekiah had a sickness that was supposed to take him out. I don't know about you, but I've been in some situations where I thought I wasn't going to make it. I've been in some situations where my back was against the wall. And I guess you could say that that was a sickness. But Hezekiah had been visited by the prophet Isaiah. And the Lord had sent word to him that he was going to die. However, I want you to know more. I wanted to know more about this sickness that he had. And how did he incur this particular sickness? So I went back and I plugged in my Google and I asked different questions concerning Hezekiah. So if you know anything about the Old Testament, you know that there were some good kings and there were some bad kings. Well, it just so happened that Hezekiah was a good king. He was one of God's favorite kings. He had took on the role of kingship when he was 25 over the tribe of Judah. He served them faithfully for 29 years with God's help. So as we go, and then I wanted to know, it says that he had a sickness that was unto death. So of course I plugged in what kind of sickness did he have? Because I want to know if he's a good king, and if he had served God faithfully, why had he been served a death sentence? All I'm telling you this morning is that it says further down that he had a sickness that was like a boil. Somewhere on his body, which it says was a sign of bubonic plague. It says that the bubonic plague would take you out if you were not careful. It's almost like this thing we call COVID nowadays. You know, it was just by the grace of God that we did not get it. Some of us had it, but all of us didn't. Some people died, but many didn't. All I'm telling you this morning is that there is a sickness unto death in the land. But it's a choice that you make as to how you will come out of that situation. It said word came to Hezekiah by God that the by God through Isaiah to tell him that he had to get his house in order. I don't know about you if you've been so sick and in the hospital and the doctor said, I've done all that I can do. It's left up to God as to what he wants to do. All I'm telling you is that's what they told Hezekiah. I done done all I can do. You got three days to get your house in order. And in three days you will die and not recover. How many of you know that all sickness is not unto death? Amen? Amen. Is there a witness in the house today? Yeah. All sickness is not unto death. Many times we felt like we were dying. Many times we felt like we couldn't get up. But all I'm telling you this morning that every period is not the end of the situation. I would like to see a comma at the end of my sentence because I know behind that comma something else is going to come. All I'm telling you this morning, you need to stop putting a period where a period doesn't go. Because when you put a period there, that's the end of that sentence. But if you put a comma or a semicolon, that means that there is something else to come. All I'm telling you this morning is that it's the choices that we make whether we will live or die in this thing that we're in. I'm telling you this morning that you need to make a choice. The question was asked, who's on the Lord's side? And the response was said, I'm on the Lord's side. 
If I were you and I'm on the Lord's side, you ought to show some kind of sign every now and then that the Lord has been mighty, mighty good to you. Every now and then, you ought to wave your hands in anticipation of what God's going to do in you and through you. Every sickness is not on to death. Every situation will not take you out. But there is just a comma at the end of that story. Sometimes, y'all, we need to get like Hezekiah. None of us are perfect. None of us has done everything that God told us to do. But we have, we should have such a relationship with God that when things come up in our lives, we can go to him and say, Lord, I did the best I could with what you gave me. Now, I would say, say Lord, I've been faithful my whole life. But I can't tell him I've been faithful my whole life. Because, see, there were some times when D did what D wanted to do. Yeah. And there were some times when God said, go left, and I chose to go right. right. So I can't stand before God and say, Lord, I've been faithful over everything that you gave me. Yeah. But what I can do is say, Lord, I did the best that I could with what you placed in front of me. I didn't go everywhere, but I went where I could go. Yeah. And be honest with God. See, we don't want folks to know what we used to do. We don't want folks to know we used to party all night long and then pop up at the church house bright and early on Sunday morning. But many of us came to church because our mamas made us come to church because we've been out all night long. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Because if she made you come, you got something. Or you wouldn't be sitting in the house today. You wouldn't be covering your hands and giving God no praise on today. So something that mama did made some sense. Amen? Amen. A scripture this morning says in those days, Hezekiah had became ill and he was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you are going to die, and you will not recover. Uh -huh. Well, Hezekiah could have chose to call his family together. Hezekiah could have chose to write out his last will and testament. Because the word says, get your house in order. Get yourself together and prepare to meet your maker. But rather than to accept the death sentence. See y'all, we accept too much foolishness from too many people that don't know God, that ain't met God, but they want to see you messed up, jacked up, just like them. I know I'm right about it because I've met some people like that. I still know some people like that. If you say I'm doing fine, then they want to know how come. If you down in the dumps, then they ready to rejoice and shout with you. But I want some people around me that can encourage me when I'm down. I want some people around me that will celebrate with me. All I'm telling you this morning, I've received a death sentence more times than I can count. But I put my faith to work. I put my faith to work. And that's what Hezekiah did. He didn't care who saw him. He went in his room. And rather than to call his family together, he called on the name of the Lord. He said, Lord... I've been faithful. Can y'all say it this morning? Lord, I've been faithful. He said, I have walked before you upright. 
and with a whole heart devotion. I have done what is good in your eyes. See, every now and then, while we might not have a picture perfect light, God has spared us because we've done something right. So every now and then, we need to remind God about the promises that he made to us. Every now and then, we need to remind God about what his word says. Every now and then, we need to remind God that I took the little that you gave me and I helped the poor. I took the little that you gave me and I blessed the homeless person. I took what I had and I shared it with somebody that didn't. So Lord, I just need you to make a way. See, we all ought to to have some testimonies of where God done brought us out. Where God done done something for us. And Lord, I know if you did it yesterday, I know you'll do it today. See, we need to remind God. We need to quit going in our closet talking about, well, I I don't feel good. I feel like today might be my last day. I feel like I'm going to get put out of my house. I feel like I can't pay my bill. It's time out for moaning about what you can't do and trust the one who can do everything in his time. I hope Sister Sharon don't mind, but I can imagine when she left home to go to the hospital, she didn't realize when she got to the hospital that she was going to cold. She didn't ever think that when she got to the hospital, she might not make it back home. But God on this morning, she had a testimony down on the inside. She had a prayer wheel turning when she couldn't say a word. Her inner man was preaching and praying on her behalf. All I'm telling you this morning is that sometimes you got to declare that I will not die, but I will live to declare the glory of God. Sometimes you got to put some words in your mouth. I might not have it today, but I'm going to have it sooner or later. I don't know what I would have done if I was Hezekiah. But I've heard those words before. I heard the doctor tell my family that I've done all that I can do. I've heard the doctor say if that blood pressure don't come down, she's going to die. I've heard the doctors tell my family, girl, a family in because she ain't going to make it. But look at me. Look at me declaring God's word every chance I get, singing God's praise every chance I get because I will not die. Amen. But I'm going to live to declare God's glory and I'll tell it wherever I go. Not only did Helicopter remind God about what he had done, but he turned his face to the wall and he cried. The scripture said he cried bitter tears. He wasn't ready to go. He knew that he had some more work in him. He knew that God was not through with him yet. And the scripture says that before Isaiah could get, I would imagine outside that church door, the Lord spoke again to him. And he said, go back and tell Hezekiah that he will not die, but he's going to live. 
All I'm telling you this morning that you can have 15 more years added to your life. If you would just declare God's goodness over your life. Y'all give God some praise up in here. Live or die. What's your choice on today? The scripture says before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer. Some of y'all need to go in the prayer closet. And you need to stay there until you hear God say well done. Until you get confirmation that God has heard your cry. Sometimes you got to stay there. You can't go in there five minutes and think you're done. Sometimes you need to sing a little bit, pray a little bit, praise a little bit. Sometimes you need to tarry with the Lord so that you can get what you need from the Lord and the Lord can get what he needs from you. Amen. On the third day, from now, he says, you will go up into the temple of the Lord. And he said, I will add 15 years to your life. Yeah. It's something about that number three, y'all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said in three days you'll die. And then he said in three days you will go into the temple. And I will add 15 years to your life. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then Isaiah said prepare a poultice and a figs and place it on that bowl. And he did and he became well. See, most of the Assyrian army, the army that Hezekiah was fighting against, had been plagued with boils, and many of them had died. And it's imaginable that Hezekiah could have contracted that boil from one of the Assyrian army. Because bear in mind that Hezekiah was a good king. And with that being said, good things, bad things do happen to good people. Y'all hear me this morning? Y'all know how sometimes we say, oh, that was a good person. Why that happened? Bad things do sometimes happen to good people. But you don't have to stay in that situation. He said, this is the Lord's sign to you. That the Lord will do what he has promised. He said, the shadow will go forward. But how many times have you seen a shadow go backwards? So he said, it is simple matter for the shadow to move forward, said Hezekiah, rather have it go back 10 steps. So see, sometimes if you're not sure what God is doing in your life, if you're not sure you where you're supposed to be, ask God for a sign. See, Hezekiah said, I know the shadow will go forward, but I need to see the shadow go backward. And if I see the shadow go backward, then I know God got me. Y'all know I tell y'all about Gideon all the time because Gideon is one of my favorite prophets. He asked the Lord for a sign. He said, if I put the fleece out and it's dry, I know it's you. If I put it out and it's wet and everything else dry, I know it's you. God, don't get mad, but I just need to know it's you. Sometimes, y'all, we just need to know that God is God and God is going to do what God said he's going to do. Amen? Y'all feel all right this morning? Amen. What's your choice? You gonna live? Are you gonna die in your mess? Are you gonna live? Are you gonna die right where you are? See, that don't mean you're gonna die today. It just means that you'd rather stay where you are than to give God some praise. That means you just rather stay where you are than to confess, Lord, I messed up. I messed up a lot of times. But God, I need you to come through for me this time. We're going to mess up again as long as we walk the earth. We're going to mess up because none was perfect. They walked the earth but Jesus himself. So we're going to mess up day in and day out. Whether we intend to or not, we're going to mess up. But we need to know that we have an advocate with the Father. That we can go to him when things get real bad. 
when we find ourselves backed up against the wall, we need to know that God's going to come through for us. That we don't have to die when we are, but we can live. Hallelujah! And we can declare the works of the Lord. Because God has been what? Just that good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Y'all give God one more hand of praise in this place. What will your choice be? I don't know about you, but I choose to live. Yeah. <clears throat> I get tired of saying I'm tired because <clears throat> I work and I go all the time. But it's because I choose to. Mm. I can choose to sit down too and rest. So it's about the choices. Yeah. So if I keep going, then I'm going to keep being tired. Mm. What's your choice this morning? Mm -hmm. I want to live. I want to tell as many people as I can about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. I want to tell as many people as I can how God called a, good, a little old country girl like myself when I was 16, 17 years old to lay hands on my grandmother because she was in so much pain. Yes. I want to tell people how God used me to raise her up off her sickbed when she had been given two or three days to live, but she lived two or three more years. I want to live to declare God's goodness. That just like God used my hands, he'll use your hands. Just like God used my feet, he'll use your feet. Just like God raised Sister Sharon up, he'll raise all of us up. All I'm telling you this morning, that God desires to use each and every one of us. But we got to choose to allow him to use us because he's not going to force himself on us. He's not going to make us say, yeah, Lord, you can use me. But if I was you, in my own secret prayer time, I would say, Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Here's my hand, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. That's what it's all about this morning, y'all. Making ourselves available. Hallelujah. Somebody sing us a song. Y'all stand to your feet. The doors of the church are open this morning. We extend to you an invitation to give God your heart and give the preacher your hand on today. There will never be another day like today. Tomorrow won't work. Because tomorrow is not promised. Amen. <clears throat> Come to Jesus. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to
Yeah. 